Well, I am. I live alone uh, now, um, but my my family support me. There's um, two of my family um, um, work to keep the books in circulation. My uh, former wife of 29 years, she runs the whole operation just five minutes from here. Um, and um, I decided a, a long time ago when I started to realize what was happening, that there was nothing for me to do with my life um, other than um, try to alert people to what was going on and also alert people to the um, way that their sense of who they are and their sense of reality and the sense of what the world is they live in has been distorted, manipulated and um, sold to them um, as a fake persona and a fake reality. And so um, I get up every morning and I go to bed every night and between the two I focus um, almost the entire time on, on, on doing what I do. My family kind of support me in this and all the rest of it, but to be honest, um, if they didn't, and if no one else did, I would still do it, and I'd still do it with the passion that I do it. Um, as Gandhi said, uh, even if you're a, in a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. But the, the great thing is that I'm not in a minority of one. What's happened is that um, the manipulators have hijacked the mainstream of public awareness and public information. And there are people all over the world that basically think and see reality in uh, the same way who have no idea that there are others all over the world that see reality in the same way. So they think I'm different, I'm odd, I must have got it wrong, I must be crazy. And what I'm trying to do and what I am doing, I've had a lot of success uh, in doing it, is to be um, a voice there that says, hey, you're not alone. You know, you're not alone. And, and if I've had a, a reaction more than any other over the years, it's thank goodness I realized I, I wasn't crazy. There are other people that think like me. And it's kind of an antidote to divide and rule. Um, and it's, it's having an effect uh, without any doubt. I mean, I was talking to a man and a dog when I started out. You see, the world population is in a hypnotic trance. This is the thing. Um, we, uh, our consciousness, um, experiencing it in this reality for a short time through this, what I call this body computer. Um, and the computer um, can, can think for itself up to a point. It's, it's not like a computer that just takes in data and then reacts to order, um, it has the ability to assess information and react on the basis of that assessment. That's what things like the immune system are doing all the time. Um, and if our consciousness um, goes to sleep or cannot get um, enough impact on the computer, then basically the computer runs itself. And I see so many people in what I call computer mode where you can predict what they're going to do just as much as you can type data into a computer and press enter. You know what the computer's going to do. You can do that with people. We are pro programmable um, until we become uh, much more conscious than, than, than we are. When we are in what I call just body consciousness, we are extremely programmable because this is a computer. And um, people don't realize that uh, the five senses um, are just sending information to the brain which then decodes that information and so if you are um, in a hypnotic um, 
stage show, I've seen people eating potatoes, for instance, and um, thinking they were apples. I've seen people who thought there was an elephant in the audience. Um, why? Because the hypn hypnotist implants into the, 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 the brain, if you like, the, the lower mind stroke brain, um, a belief in reality. And that's the same principle as in China, where they firewall off most of the internet so that people there cannot access it. What the hypnotist is doing is basically um, imposing a, uh, or uh, interrupting the normal decoding mechanism of the brain. So, with the example of the uh, potato and the apple, the um, electrical signal carrying the taste of the, uh, uh, of the potato it goes to the brain as normal, but it decodes it differently because of the implanted belief that the guy's eaten an apple. And this basic principle is used on us all the time, um, not least through the greatest hypnotist known to humanity at this time, the television which is telling us constantly what to believe is real, what to believe in terms of who we are, what to believe is success, what to believe life is about. And if we um, uh, then go through an education system, which is nothing more than indoctrinating children with the official version of reality, then by the time we become adults, we can become, if we uh, uh, are not holding our consciousness we can become only body conscious and we can become programmed in the way that we um, see the world we can become hypnotized like studios on the stage of a hypnotist what information does is it basically reminds people um, uh, of um, facts they already know and realities they already know but the hypnosis has made them forget i.e. we are all infinite consciousness um, and it, it, it triggers them to start to wake up it's like whispering in their ear wake up, wake up, wake up um, and uh, you, your infinite consciousness remember, remember and it, it can have a very powerful effect on people where people wake up real fast and go, whoa, I, I, why didn't I see it before? Because you just woke up from the trance. And um, it's uh, a very, information is, is a very, very powerful thing um, for um, changing people's sense of reality. And that's what I'm trying to do, get it into places it wasn't getting before. Einstein um, has, has a, had a wonderful, um, phrase um, it's been quoted using different ways but basically it says this you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them now what we're living in is a world that is controlled by the intellect which is a very low level of consciousness the intellect operates through the the left brain overwhelmingly and it's about language, it's about seeing the world in parts, it's about looking at the complexity and, and delving into the complexity. Um, and it's about, can I see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, therefore it must exist. There are so many dots to connect. There's so much information to present and connect before the apparently ludicrous starts to make logical sense that main, the mainstream media will never, ever give you enough time to make those connections. Um, so what I do with that whole reptilian side of my work is I'll talk about it in my own public presentations where I can give it as much time as I decide to give it. I write about it extensively in my books for the same reason. But in the mainstream, I will not talk about it um, uh, because I know that it's going to be reported in the same way. Oh, it's his joint base business from the world. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. And um, uh, so, well, they, they, I'll ask you a question uh, which answers your question. What level of consciousness controls the mainstream media? The intellect. 
um, and sometimes a very, very, very low level of intellect. And therefore, um, apart from the odd journalist who is more whole-brained, if you like, and uh, multi-level consciousness, not just intellectually consciousness, conscious, then um, um, they're just not going to see it. They're not going to get it. I mean, it's extraordinary that you can talk to um, a lady with no formal education and all the rest of it, and she gets it. Um, and you can see it and can feel it. And then you talk to a journalist or an intellectual from Oxford University and they look at you as if you just walked off um, a spaceship um, because they can't get it because they're not accessing those levels of consciousness that can get it. So, of course, um, an intellect-controlled media um, is going to see me um, as crazy, insane, dotty, I think it's a word I can use, and, um, and all the rest of it. So, uh, but you have to accept that. And, but I have, a, I, I have learned one great thing over the years. People can't unhear something. And the reason that um, uh, enormous numbers of people are now turning to my work, um, overwhelmingly the reason, is because things I wrote about in my books years ago are now happening. That's the key reason. And um, if I had um, not said and wrote what I did, despite the ridicule and the hostility, then they'd have never read it and they'd have never then seen that it's happening now.